Morning, everybody. It's now five. Well, it's morning for me. It's five a.m. in Montreal, and uh, I fell asleep really early last night because I had some French fries and salad, and the glycemic index, I think it's called, in the French fries kills me and puts me to sleep. And another sign of middle-aged existence. So here's the uh, the city at five in the morning. Sun's just coming out now. So it's looking pretty good out there. And uh, as you guys know, I really love to uh, head off in the morning to get a coffee and a bagel. Yep, I'm back on the coffee now. My voice is not 100%. But I realized the thing that was really affecting my voice and my ability to speak was talking to um, friends of mine who are not exactly uh, the most reasonable people. I would get into arguments with them and screaming matches. So I've had enough of that. I've uh, cut them out. No more stupid arguments with people about ridiculous subjects. And here it is. Man, the morning light looks really good. I don't know if you can see it in the, in the video. Anyway, that's about it. So I'm off to get my coffee. It's still really cool out here. But... Um, yeah. Hey guys, how are ya? So I've been working this morning on the uh, the infamous Python course, and uh, yeah, I'm in the last few videos. I'm actually now working on the object-oriented portion of it, which is kind of the last stage, where I'm teaching object-oriented programming principles, and I'm showing you how it's all expressed. Now, when you're building a course you have the same considerations that you have when you are building apps, and that is what to leave out. That is so important. You see, when you're building a course, there's so much you could teach. I could go on and on and on and on and on, but if you do that, it, can get, it gets pretty bad. So as a teacher, it's my job to figure out what's important, what needs to be taught, what does the student need to know to be able to move forward. So in a beginner's course, my main goal is to help you understand the basic principles of programming and the basic techniques. So variables, functions, arrays, loops, variable scope, inheritance, OOP, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're building apps, it's much the same way because if, if you had any experience building apps or websites, you could find yourself going down this rabbit hole of feature creep. I've done this, I've talked about this in a previous video. Feature creep is basically where new and new and new and new features are added to the app or to the website or to the web app. Your, whether it be you or your clients going, oh, that would be great. We could do this. We could have this. We could add this. We could do that. And next thing you know, you have a Franken app. And a Franken app just goes out of control and kills everybody. You know what I mean? You don't want to kill your app and I don't want to kill any of my courses by overloading them but way too much. The key is, is to provide what is needed and nothing more. This is an old principle in engineering. I learned it when I was a kid from my uh, father. Well, not from my father. Anyway, I learned it from somebody and uh, it was a KISS principle, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. Old engineering principle. Simple is better, of course, I think most people get that these days, largely because of Apple. Apple kind of made simple a chic. Uh, and uh, that's good because that's what separates a lot of times the good apps from the bad apps is the simplicity of the app. So I was talking to a former mentee of mine about the quality of apps, what makes a good app. And what makes a good app, again, is a simple app. It's an app that does exactly what the user needs and not much more or not more because you overload an app with too many functions, too many capabilities, and it gets confusing. There's too many options. People don't know where to click, and it's, it's, it becomes a, u a less useful app. And these days, what separates the great apps... There we go. I had lost my train of thought before, if you hadn't picked it up. What separates the great apps from the not-so-great apps is the great apps are very simple, very clean. It's all about UI and UX. And that, of course, is reflected in the simplicity of the functionality. If you have too many functions that you have to 
expose through your u user interface through uh, and, and then you, know, you manage all that with user experience ux it becomes very difficult if you have many 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 features so the key is to identify those key features and many of time many of the times most applications most business needs uh, require a very f finite set a limited set of features to get the job done and uh, so I'm very reticent with, for instance, uh, I don't know if reticent is the right word, I'm very reluctant, rather, with Studio Web to add more features. I've been working with teachers for six, seven years now, working with schools, and we, we talk to teachers all the time, well, especially me, I talk to teachers all the time, I'm monitoring things, and I'm always refining it, refining, and it's, it's very, I'm very hesitant to add anything to the system in terms of functionality, unless I really see an overwhelming need, a consensus amongst many teachers. Because if you start adding a feature for this person here, and a feature for that person here, and a feature for this person here, again, you're going to have this giant console, all kinds of buttons and features, and it's just going to be confusing for everybody. Simple is better, but simple is hard. And going back to my course, same thing. Simple is hard. When do I uh, cut off? When do I stop? teaching Python, because, you know, Python is such a vast subject. You can, you know, after the basics, you can get into uh, drawing and animations and game design. You can get into machine learning, AI. You can get into web development. You can get into um, data analysis. Oh, so much you can do. So what I decided to do with this beginner's course is, again, to concentrate on the basics. I introduce a lot of these basic concepts with, you know, drawing and animation with Python, because it's pretty easy to do in Python. Again, my main goal with a beginner's course is to teach you those basic concepts. It's like if I was teaching you how to box, I wouldn't be teaching you advanced combinations when I'm first teaching you how to box. I teach you the basics, give you that foundation, and then you can get into those advanced combinations and, sh and tactics and so forth that will take you to that high level. Same thing with my Python course. The idea is there is to get that solid foundation, and from there you can jump in. If you want to go into AI, you have the foundation to jump into AI to start that journey. If you want to get into the web, you have that foundation to start the web end of it, etc., etc., etc. So I decided, because it was a question, do I, how much do I add into this beginner's course all these extra aspects of Python? Do I introduce this and I introduce that? Do I introduce this? And I decided I'm already in for, we're looking, it's going to be, you know, I'm, I'm at lesson number 48. And uh, it's probably going to be about 55 lessons by the time I'm done the, the OO component. And uh, OO is object-oriented. So I figure, you know what, I'm going to hold off on the AI. I'm going to hold off on, uh, you know, programming Python with Raspberry Pi, maybe in a separate course or something. But again, once you have that foundation, you'll be able to, uh, as a coder, as a developer, who've learned the basics of Python from my course, everything else will be easy to approach, whether it be a, a subsequent Python course from me, or you just, at this point, you'll be able to go to the docs, right? And you'll be able to pick up things much more easily. And ironically, once I've taught the basics, to have a, a student, to teach a student you know, web and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the more advanced stuff is actually a lot easier for me as a teacher because then they become a lot less uh, having to explain concepts and more just showing them, you know, walking them through libraries of code, right? Anyhow, that's pretty much it. We shall talk soon.